Hi guys, in this video, I will be sharing my experience using the All About Reading curriculum and I will also do a little bit of a walkthrough in this video using one of the chapters in the level three, which is the um, the level that I'm using with my third and my fifth grader. A couple of weeks ago, someone asked me if I would be willing to do a little bit of a walkthrough and it being an older curriculum with, you know, a lot of reviews and stuff online, I wanted to try to do this in a way that might be helpful. So hopefully this video is helpful. We've used um, levels one through four for most of our homeschool journey. There is a pre-reading level, but I did not, I did not use that. Um, some years we were more consistent than others and I will get more into that later on in the video. Um, when it, when it comes to the different components of the All About Reading curriculum, with my eldest, I used most of the level one components, the teacher's manual, the activity book. I even used the trackers, um, the, the phonogram cards, the word cards for her. I used, pro, you know, let's go with a third of the word cards. And then, uh, you know, we kind of fell off from using those cause it, I didn't see the need to use them. Um, and the activities in the level one, when I was doing it with her, she just went, you know, just happened to line up with her grade. She was in the grade in grade one. And we did some of the activities together with going through the word phrases and all of that. So when it comes to the level one, I used most of it with her. And with my, with my third and my fifth grader, I did use quite a bit of it as well with them. I did not use the word cards with my third and my fifth grader when I got around to using it with them. With the level two, um, we started to fall off with some of the components that we were using. Uh, with my eldest, she was in the second grade when we were doing level two. We used teacher's manual, um, the, act, the um, activity book. I, I want to say somewhere around halfway, you know, in the activity book. I wasn't really using any of the activities, just going through the word phrases and all of that stuff. And by that time, we, I started to, you know, find it difficult in keeping up with the trackers, right? Um, the tracker with the sticker and all the stickers and all of that. Oh, I didn't touch on the tiles. The tiles, I've always used the, the word tiles with the magnetic board um, and the readers as well, right? But anyway, back to the activity book. And, uh, you know, I used about halfway through the level two with her and with my third and my fifth grader. I want to say that I just use it for used it because we just, you know, got through it. I used it for going through the word phrases and the um, practicing of the words from the last, the previous lesson and the words for the current lesson. So that's what I used from the activity book. Still use the readers and the tiles, the word cards. We don't use those. The phonogram cards for a short time, I had stopped using it and I had switched to using the phonogram app. But sometime last year, um, I made a decision to try not to use un unless I have to, you know, look up something, try not to use my phone in the school room. So, um, I, I, I have, I do use the phonogram cards, the phonogram cards still. We are in the level three with my eldest. We just used the readers, the tiles and the teacher's manual. By the time we got to level three, I don't even think we were, I was using it for going through the, um, the word phrases and stuff for her because it wasn't, it wasn't really adding anything for her. So I did not use it with her. Um, and if I did, it was so little that I can't, I honestly can't recall. Um, with my current daughters though, I am using it for the word phrases and the, the practicing of the words from the previous, the previous lesson. Again, we still use the phonogram cards. We use the tiles and we use the, the readers level four, I presume would be, would look pretty similar to, to level three, where we probably will not be using any of the activities from the activity book and uh, we will just use it for going through phrases and words if it's necessary when they get to that point god's prayer the tiles my 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 eldest used it and my third and my fifth grader they learn 
best when they can interact with stuff so the tiles they love using the tiles i will not be using the word cards but i will continue to use the phonogram cards when i think that they need just a little bit of practice and of course the readers we will continue to use those so that's just to touch on the components that you know i have found that we've used throughout the years when it comes to the tracking with these stars you know the little stickers and stuff i do not use those anymore um, about two maybe three years ago I just found it hard to keep up with it so we stopped using it um, so before I actually you know share a little bit more about my experience um, some you know pros and some cons and just some questions that I asked myself as I was getting this curriculum I just wanted to share um, some two free resources that are, it's probably not new to the homeschool community and also three cheaper options because one of the greatest lessons that I have learned in my homeschool journey is that you can have the best curriculum but if it is for whatever reason even if it's just your style of teaching you're not able to actually use it because some curriculum can be much more involved than others then it is just a really good curriculum that you're just not able to use so just to share some free options and these are not new so this here is succeeding at reading and if I can find the link I will link it below you can print this out for free it is two sections there there are two sections there's one that you know the student can have and the teacher can have the teacher section um, the parent to teacher guide section just have a few extra um, pages I have it all bound together since I don't use it anymore um, so there is that and then easy peasy homeschool which is not new to the homeschool community when my kids were in preschool and kindergarten I actually used quite a bit of e just little components of eat not quite a bit but I did use you know um, a couple components of easy peasy um, homeschool whether it be for math and certain aspects of the language arts so that's an excellent resource so you can definitely check them out they have a reading program on there as well right um as a cheaper option when my kids were in kindergarten and preschool or preschool and kindergarten I used this with my my eldest and my now fifth grader well most of this with my now fifth grader right this is an, an excellent program it is pretty it's easy enough to follow along and according to this book by the time they're finished with this they can read at a solid second grade level so this is definitely one to check out and you can pick this up for less than 16 dollars on amazon as you know as something to start off i did want to mention i was trying to kind of compare the um the lessons that's covered in here and what's covered in the level one to see if you know you can just totally negate getting the level one if it is you did this um and i would say that the, the later part of the level one does cover some phonograms that at least i can i haven't noticed it's covered in here um maybe it's not necessary because this the way how this is laid out they do a little bit of a, of a review um at the beginning of each new level but that's just something i wanted to mention but um, so so there's that um, so this is something um, this is a good option to consider now a couple of years ago like two well not two three four years ago now <laughs> time is flying um, we had some family crisis and I found it really difficult to keep up with the all about reading program in particular and I was looking for some other resources to kind of get me through that period and that's how I came upon this dam um, that's succeeding at reading and also this now I didn't really use this I just skimmed through it um, because I had picked up something else but I picked this up at a thrift store just paid a couple dollars for it well two dollars um, but this is actually an excellent curriculum it is by Jesse Wise from the well-trained mind and I have used um, quite a bit of stuff from them this is on their website you can get this is the older version you can pick this up for less than twelve dollars um they do have a newer version that has a teacher and a student book and together it's like fifty dollars but this you can pick this up for less than twelve dollars they also have like some optional cards which is less than eight dollars and also a, an audio um something i'm not sure if it's an mp you know mp3 or if it's um if it's an actual disc but it's less than eight dollars as well right but this is also another option. This has quite a bit of reviews online 
and it's a well-trained mind i've used a lot of their stuff and it's usually really really good stuff so i'm pretty certain that this is probably a good curriculum as well it would just come down to the style and if it is you need more of that you know interaction for if the kid needs more of that interactive learning um compared to like something like this but as i said they do have optional cards that you can get and then lastly I have actually used this for a short time during that period that I was mentioning just now, a workbook for dyslexics, and I do have a child that has dyslexia. I really wanted this to work, <laughs> um, but I think eventually I decided to go back to All About Reading and just change the way how I use the program and, you know, the pace that I was going through it because I, I think I got accustomed to how, how the All About Reading program is laid out and is one of the things that I really like about the program despite you know the negatives um if for me I just find that it is just well organized and it just works for me right so but I really wanted this I really wanted this to work right it does teach you know like phonics and stuff like this and you can pick this up for things like 15 something like less than 16 dollars um, on Amazon and if you have a kid like, that is older and they're still learning to read this is a really great option because it is recommended for ages 13 to adult I do have a little bit of a review um, on my channel and a, well and a flip through if you wanted to, to take a look at this right so I just wanted to mention some other option because as I said you know in my opinion a really great curriculum is is only as good as you're able to use it in my opinion so there are certain things that I was looking for when I first, you know, when I was first trying to find a reading curriculum that was, you know, like fully comprehensive. Um, I wouldn't say that at that time I considered if it was something that I would really be able to dedicate the time to getting, you know, the best use of, but that came over time. Um, I at, the, at that stage of my homeschooling journey, I looked for a lot of curriculum that was, you know, scripted. Now, over the years, I've I've, I find that a lot of homeschool curriculum that is scripted, if you read it as it's laid out, it can sound a little strange and you do have to kind of ad lib a little bit, but it's scripted enough where you can still read it, you know, like if you're just really new to this and, um, you don't have time to prep because even though prepping is great, um, I don't get a lot of time to like sit down and pre-read like all of my lessons, no. right? So if it is that you don't have that kind of time to, it is very much pos possible where you can just open the book the next day and uh, you know, you're able to just, you know, follow along, you know, well enough. And over time, you would be able to, you know, kind of put your own spin to it. So it's scripted enough. Um, it is easy enough to use. Now, it does have all of the different components. And that's what I was referring to when I say when I said earlier, if it is, I would be actually if I would actually be able to dedicate the time to using it during a normal season, normal season, because normal is, is different for everybody. It's it, it is time consuming but it is doable if you have anything that um is out of the norm it is very much difficult to try to keep up with something like this because just using the teacher's manual i'm not going to sit down here and say that it is impossible but i really find that the way how this curriculum is laid it really goes hand in hand with using at least the tiles um and the readers right so if it is you have anything that's going on that prevents you from being able to do that it can be a little bit challenging using this curriculum so that's definitely something at least in my opinion to consider right um i i, I touched on the components that we've used i'm not saying that one is you know that you don't need or versus need a certain part but those are just I'm just sharing what it is we actually used in the curriculum, right? So, um, you know, there's, there is a bit of wastage that happens with a curriculum like this. Now, you may have a problem like I have, which is that feeling of, you know, you know, completeness. And that can be a little bit of a problem. But if that is not an issue for you, then it is definitely worth going on their website and, you know, taking out certain components, putting it together and seeing what that price difference is 
and if it's you know enough of a saving um savings to kind of leave out certain parts or you know buy the whole um set together sometimes the way how the set is there's just components in there that you can't really buy separately but as i said if you go on their website that's something that you can definitely figure out all right so now i want to share some of the pros and cons at least from my perspective using this curriculum um so i really like how the curriculum is organized i like that when they're introducing a new a new phonogram sorry like say the ch phonogram they will tell you all the songs that ch make the three songs but it will also tell you the the um the coming chapters that they would be looking at the second sound and the third sound so it's like you're kind of going through all of the songs initially but if you wanted to for some reason go back and look at all of the different information and rules pertaining to that first or second sound you know exactly where to go you know and that's introduced when that phonogram is introduced but also it's you know it's um it's laid out in the appendices at the back of the book as well so i really like that i like that um it with the practicing of the phonograms the the child learns the order to try a phonogram song especially for those phonograms that have like multiple sounds um, when they are decoding new words, they're able to know that, okay, if it is you're, you're, you're finding a word with C, or sorry, with CH for the first time, you try the ch first, then k, then sh, you know, and all of the, these are pros, but I will share when I'm, when I'm talking about the cons, I will share how sometimes, how that can actually be a con as well, right? But anyway, um, so I like how the phonograms is laid out and they practice the songs in order so that when they are decoding new words, they're able to try those words, you know, um, using the songs in order. Hopefully that makes sense. Right. Um, I like that it's a fully comprehensive curriculum. It has, you know, if I'm sure that no curriculum is perfect and there's there's probably stuff that is not in here, but it has so much of it that, you know, your child should be a really great <laughs> reader by the time they, they are finished with this, um, this curriculum, right? I like that it's scripted or scripted well enough that if it is, you have no experience, you could just follow it, you know, um, as it's laid out and you'd be able to, to get your, your children from not reading to reading, right? The built-in practice and review. I like how that is built in. So they're continuously going through the phonograms. Now, when it comes to the phonograms, over time, you know, you adapt how it is you, you go through stuff. And over time, I don't go through the phonograms all the time. What I have started doing, especially this year, um, this year, to go in line with keeping consistent, instead of, with the exception of, well, sometimes, sorry, sometimes life happens and you just can't get something done. But to help stay consistent, if it is um, we're not able to get through every single thing, I may fill in, especially with reading, I may fill in a reading lesson. I've done it, I think, twice for the term already, where for that lesson, instead of starting something new, I would just do a little bit of review. We'll go through the phonograms, have them practice, and probably go through like the previous um, words and, and phrases from the last lesson. It may be just five minutes, but that keeps us consistent. So, but anyway, but I do like that it has built in practice and review. I like that it has the tactile learning, especially for my third and my fifth graders. They, they actually really do enjoy, um, using the, the tiles. So I really do like that. Um, it, oh, if it is you are using it with the all about spelling, it, it, they do complement each other pretty well. Um, that can be a con as well, and I'll get into that just now, but they do complement each other pretty well, right? And, uh, you know, not sure if this is something important to you, but it is a, you know, a great, like, reference for learning the different rules when it comes to, like, pho phonogram songs and stuff like that. All right. Oh, and if you have, if you have multiple kids, it can be used, you know, like over and over again. There's just a few parts that are consumables, but for the most part, the main parts of the curriculum, you can use them over and over. The readers, the magnetic tiles, the teacher's manual, and even most of the, um, 
the activity book, right? So I really do like that you can use it over, you know, like multiple with multiple kids, right? Some of the, the cons, it is expensive. It is an expensive curriculum um, and is expensive, right? That's the, the, the first thing. Um, even though the order, um, using, having the phonograms being taught in such a way where they are being told, um, okay, try this phonogram first and then that's, phono sorry, this phonogram sound first, then the second sound, the third sound. That sounds great, but if it's a child that, you know, learns best with, you know, like learning list, then that really will not, you know, work for them. It might just be a whole lot of work that they're not able to actually, you know, make use of. I have found from my experience that um, some of my kids learn best with a combination. So I still go through the rules that's laid out here, but you know, I keep in mind that they just making sure that they're familiar with all of the words um, they're supposed to be familiar with at their grade level, that they're also familiar with that. I guess in a way, mixing learning through learning the phonograms, but also, you know, learning by sight, right? So sometimes a mixture might work for some kids, right? Um, what else? You will have quite a, well, not will. It's possible that you will have um, quite a bit of wasted materials. As I said, I don't use the trackers anymore. And I, I'm not sure if you're able to to put together the curriculum in a way that is financially, that makes a financial difference in the amount that you're going to pay by just, you know, leaving out the stickers and the tracker. But I don't use that anymore. I don't use most of the word cards, right? So you will, or you might have um, quite a bit of wasted materials. And depending on your style of teaching and your child's style of learning, you know, it can be a little bit, you know, busy work with, you know, all of the different um, components. So it really depends on, on your style of teaching or, you know, going through the stuff with your child and their style of learning. If it might just be a whole lot of, you know, unnecessary, you know, work or involvement. Some children, I know one of my kids, you know, is like that where they just want to get in there, do the work, and go about their business once they understand it. So that may not be the best style for, for all kids. Um, and even though the going through it consistently is beneficial, it could seem a bit repetitive. And especially if it is you're using it with the all about spelling. It's being taught in a different way in the all about spelling in the sense, well, for the most part, because it's more focusing on how, how words are spelled, but sometimes it does some of the um the comp the aspects some of the um the phonogram sorry can seem you know repetitive hopefully that makes sense okay all right um so before i go in to doing a walkthrough as i realize my mind is starting to go all over the place um i just wanted to share a few like real life examples where i have seen them actually or witness them actually use some of the rules that they are learning in the All About Reading program. Now, I do want to say um, that they're not, well, talking from my experience, most likely they're not going to remember most of these rules, but I do believe now that it gets them from reading, say, at a first, second, you know, take them takes them to a higher level of reading, probably faster, if they learn, you know, like the rules of reading, even though they don't actually remember the actual rule. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Because a lot of the rules, my eldest, because she's in the same, you know, space with my, th my third and my fifth grade, and most times she's re- um, reviewing or she's she's able to go over some of those rules that she probably forgot or most likely forgot but it still benefited her because of the level of reading that she's able to do now in my opinion right but when it comes to my my fifth and my third grader I have witnessed them use some of the rules like you know when I think we were doing um what was the word there was a specific word, I'm trying to remember it, that we were looking at in their science and they were discussing amongst themselves like why the C was making a hard C sound 
and you know as opposed to a C, a, a soft C sound and I do I am definitely sure that 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 comes from the them using this program the doubling of consonants and when to double those consonants I've also witnessed them you know like with their dad who has double consonants in his name you know having that conversation with him and one of the things that one of the other things that I've seen them um, make use of is discussing like the silent E the, the different jobs of silent E. As I said, do I think that they're going to remember all of these rules? Probably not, but at least right now, I'm seeing them interact with it, you know, in their, you know, their own their lives. Um, so I think that that is, it is helpful. And as they progress in their reading, I am seeing them actually made, make use of it. All right, so now I'm just going to do a walkthrough of one of these chapters and and then in the next video, I will do a flip through of levels one through four. All right, so I will be going through lesson four, which looks at phonogram OA and phonograms OA and OW both making the long O sound. It first starts off by telling you what the objective of the lesson is going to be, what you will need. So you will need the activity book, the phonogram and word cards and specific ones. So if you are following um, according to how it's laid out here, you can pull out these specific cards, especially when you're now starting off. And then the letter tiles, this is if it is you're starting off again, you will take these out of the little Ziploc bags when you first, um, you know, took all the tiles um, apart and add them to the magnetic board or whatever it is you use to, you know, use the tiles. All right. So those are the things that you will need. Um, you don't need the readers for this lesson, but these are the two readers for the level three. All right, so you begin, before you begin, you are going to preview the phonograms OA and OW. So before they actually go in to like blending the sounds together and really practicing saying that O sound, um, you're just going to go through this little section here that introduces the O sound with phonograms OA and OW. It does point out that OW has two um, sounds, OW being the first sound, which was looked at in level two, lesson 56. And then this lesson focuses on its second sound, the long O sound as in snow. All right, and this is what I was talking about early on in the video, where I said, I do like that. I like how it tells you where you can find like a more in-depth lesson for each phonogram sound as it's introduced. And that's also, that also can be found in the appendices at the back. All right. And then they have a series of words using those phonograms and they can say those words in the preview to kind of get them, you know, started. So you can go through, um, go through that. You can also use these same, these words together with the other words on the other page so that they can practice depending on how much practice they need with um using that phonogram in a word all right then you have your phonogram cards oa and ow um when i am using it with my daughters not the first time i will hold up the phonogram in front of them and say they will say the letter or say the phonogram um letters and then they would say the sound or sometimes it has a phrase that they learn to recite in this case for oa it's o two letter o that we may not use at the end of English words. And that's in quotation marks to indicate that that is what they suggest that you teach them to say. We include the additional phrase that we may not use at the end of English words on the flashcard because this information is important to know for spelling. By learning the full wording for phonogram OA now, your student won't have to relearn the flashcard for spelling purposes later. That's also what I was pointing out that um, it really does tie in really well with the all about spelling, um, which is a, be a benefit for sure. It could also seem a little repetitive, but I don't see it as a bad thing at all. It's just, you know, um, continuously driving that point through. All right. But that's that. And then the OW card O, uh, making the O, the long O sound. When they see this, this um, flashcard or phonogram card, they will say the two sounds of OW. Ow and O. Since there is no way to tell what sound O W will say in a word, your student should try each sound in sequence until it finds the right one. 
and that is to say that that's what I was talking about as well where it teaches them to learn the phonogram sounds in a sequence or in a particular order which will help them when they are now decoding new words that includes those phonograms so they will know to try ow first if they see ow o w in a foot in a new word and then try the o sound and as time goes by they do get better and um it comes more naturally all right so on top here they are going to file the oa and ow tiles under the vowel team um, section on the magnetic board or however you file your stuff here it says to refer to the letter tiles app or phonogram sounds app for a demonstration of the OA and OW, uh, um, OW phonogram sounds. This was very useful for me in the beginning. I would have I used the phonogram app at the time, how it looked back then, to, you know, kind of get to hear the, the sound myself, right? How it's pronounced so that I could pronounce it that way for, you know, when I'm teaching my kids, right? And not pronounce it necessarily how I may naturally say it. All right, when we use the OA and OW letter tiles to represent the sound of O, we only say the sound O. All right. Then you're going to review the phonogram cards and word cards. Over time, you will, you know, figure out how it is you want to file these. They suggest that if it is they have tiles that or, or phonograms that they're struggling with, the, the boxes have little sections, if you have the boxes, where you can organize it and keep most of the phonograms in one section in section sorry and then phonograms that they are struggling with and they may need more review you just take those and put them behind the review section so that um on a more frequent basis you can just review those few cards as opposed to going through all the cards all the time right um then here it's just a little reminder to shuffle the word cards just to prevent them from you know saying the um the words out of memory um so they suggest that you shuffle the word cards i do like doing these um previous concept sections i do this all the time so that they are continuously you know working on whether it's that current phonogram that they are learning or past um phonogram um rules so i do like to do these little exercises every time i see them in the book all right, so new teaching, and this is where they go into de more detail, going through the OA and OW phonograms, saying the O, the O, sorry, O sound, the long O sound. Now, with the OW, because it says OW as the first sound, they actually review that first before they go into introducing the second sound of OW. So you're going to go through this sections that you are encouraged to say are uh, in quotation marks right so o o a says o o that may not that we may not use at the end of english words repeat after me o o that we may not use at the end of english words so they are learning here what they are to say when they are going through the phonogram cards right so you're going to go through the o sounds Review the R and then do the O for the OW phonogram. Then up here, it has some extra practice activity that you can check out at append in Appendix L if you would like to. So depending on how much extra work that you would um, practice they will need, it's included in here, you know, for you. So you can just check out to the back. If it is, it would be useful, right? Then they're going to do some blending activities that's going to help them practice that, you know, really get that, um, that phonogram sound down. And they're going to do it for both the OA and the OW tile. So they're going to blend the sounds together and then bring, say the word together. Okay. And they're going to do that again. Then they're going to, um, try out a play to change the word, play, change the word with OA game. If this is going to be useful um, sometimes this can be a little bit fun depending on their age um, especially right so they will start with the word coat and blend change up swap out the C for G swap it out for M and you know sometimes they my, ch my children would try to do it as fast as possible but anyway that's just a continuously drill in the OA phonogram right 
blend sounds with the O W tile. So they're going to be doing the same thing. Now they're going to be doing it with the O W tile. So they're going to blend each sound. B uh, O blow. R O row. And you're just going to walk through the lesson with them. Again, they have changed the word section. And there are a few words that they can use to keep practicing the O sound with the O W phonogram. Here there's a little note that says use the SH tile for shown. So previous um, like blends and phonogram tiles that they've learned before, it's encouraged that you use those tiles as they are um, continuing through the program so that they are continuously, you know, reviewing, so to speak, those tiles or keeping in mind the, the sounds or the blends that those particular um, phonograms make does it make sense right so so here they suggest that you use the the sh tile for shown as opposed to just using as a separate s and a, a. so you'll be using the blue sh tile that comes together as opposed to a separate s and a separate h all right demonstrate trying multiple sounds what are the two sounds of o so again they're going to be reviewing the fact that o w has two sounds and it says how do we know if o says o Oh, sorry, ow or oh, we try both and see which sound makes a real word. So if it is, they are absolutely new to this, especially if they're starting off pretty young, right? But just with this program, then, and for some reason, they did not know the word snow, right? They would say snow, and if that didn't sound right, then they will say snow. So it's teaching them to use the phonogram sounds in order. So you're going to go through this then we get to the activity sheet are you ready to go to the dog show now so that's what you will say it's in quotation marks right dog show so it tells you it, it actually walks you through what it is to do cut out the dog and ribbon cards place the dog cards in a pile with the words facing down have your student choose a dog card from the pile and read the word aloud if he reads the word correctly he may keep the dog card if he does not read the word correctly return the card to the bottom of the pile so he may try again later so then you get your activity book and they're going to play the dog show game you can choose to copy you know cut it out whatever it is you choose to do um of course you figured it out so they're going to cut it out then the goal is for them to say the word if they get it correctly they get to keep the cute little doggy and if not they get to put it back in the pile and try again and it's encouraged with the program that you move as slowly as possible and even though it says that you know like i really had to learn how to take that to heart and not feel you know any kind of pressure to rush through um you know it's only four levels it, it it's not going to take them their whole school career um so uh, you know from my experience yeah really just you know pace through it and don't feel the need to like keep um in line with grades or anything like that it makes it so much much better to go through the program anyway so then you have the new words using the oa and the ow phonograms and there's a list of words for them to say all right so that they continuously practice in those phonograms and in the program they do um encourage you to let them read the words from left to right and not um necessarily to practice saying road oat throat but more so road toast goal float so you can go through these words at the pace that's best for you and the here it has a mixed practice section that includes both sounds for ow then they introduce some leap words and leap words are like high frequency words that um, are not are best taught like by sight as opposed to trying to sound them out, trying to use phonics. So um, I think they introduce them according to uh, like when they are going to be needed for like the, the next story that they're going to be reading. Right. But in this in this chapter, they introduce these four leap words and they are going to go a little bit more in depth in it as we go further in the teacher's manual so those are the leap words and then you have oops sorry about that shifting the camera all right then you have some sentences that continuously continues sorry to practice those phonograms that we um, are learning and it will also be going over blends and stuff that they have learned before indirectly right 
so they are going to you know go through those sentences and then there are some more words you know that is going going to help them to continue to practice those phonograms and some of them being a little bit more advanced than you know like than some all right all right so they have quite um a bit of words a, a collection of words with that phonogram so that's one definite benefit of this program if they have a phonogram that they are struggling with then it's it's a collection of words that they can you know work on to practice saying that phonogram sound all right so that's the activity then we get to the word cards and the word cards is just a selection of words that these are either in the activity book or they they were introduced in the activity book or they were in the um the teacher's section right but they're just specific words that were included in the word cards for them to practice on a continuous basis of course you decide if that's something that's going to be very useful and they can just continuously use those words the leap words you have some cards some word cards with those leap words giving a little bit more details about those leap words and you can go through that with them so friend there does and doesn't and if you wanted to you can kind of pace how you go through the activity book at least the, the, the um the pace that you go through the activity book you can kind of line it up with where you're at um in the actual teacher's manual right but over time you will get your flow all right then it says here contractions were taught in level two Contractions were taught in level 2, lesson 27. If your student needs more explicit instructions in contractions, please refer to that lesson. So it's telling you where to go back and get some practice with contractions. For example, like an um doesn't, if it is they are still struggling. So again, that organization, it kind of refers you to different sections of the program where you may need to either go back and review stuff or where you can find related information. Right here it says practice fluency. Your beginning student isn't expected to read through the practice sheets on one sitting. So many students will still be at the stage of sounding out many of the words and that can be tiring mental work. Stop before your student fatigues. You can always continue tomorrow. So it's encouraging you to not try to finish it all in one sitting. Right? And this is just a continuation of what's in the activity book. It says, it tells you to turn to further pages. So this is the section that deals with the new words. Have your student read from the practice sheets. Stop before your student reads the section labeled mixed practice for OW. And then there's something here where you say, Today, you learned many words in which OW says O. Oh, but don't forget that OW can also say OW. All right. Some of these words use the first sound of ow and some use the second sound, so, sorry, some use the first sound of OW and some use the second sound of OW. If you aren't use, if you aren't sure which sound to use, what will you do? See those are in quotation marks, so that's what you will say. And the child will respond something along the lines that says, try the first sound. If that sound doesn't make a real word, try the second sound. And then they, you have your student read through the phases in the mixed practice section and then continue with the rest of the practice sheet. So again, you can follow along the activity book in line with the teacher's manual as slowly or as quickly as will work for you, right? Then they encourage you to read a, po a story, a poem. When my kids were young, I used to do a lot of read alouds. A lot of time now, they, they have like a 20 minutes. They read daily 20 minutes. Um, Sometimes I try to squeeze, squeeze in a uh, uh, read aloud, but to be quite honest, I don't do as well as I, as I used to. But anyway, it encourages you to read aloud to your student for 20 minutes. And then they have the little sticker chart here. If you would like, or if it would benefit them to kind of see how far along they are. In the very beginning, we used to use that where you put the, put the stickers on there. I used to give my daughters the sticker for them to put on to the chart. And, and they used to enjoy doing that when they were a lot younger. All right. And that is lesson four, right? And a lot of the, letter, the letters, a lot of the lessons follows um, a similar pattern. All right. So as I'm wrapping up the video, I just want to say that as I shared my my um experience using the program 
it's not to say that I think that some parts are useful versus some parts are not useful. I was just being very honest with how I have used the program throughout the years. I believe from my experience using the program, you know, some years more consistently than others. And now, you know, having regrouped and paced myself and changed my mindset with how fast I expect to use this program, I think it's an excellent program, especially if it is you are really able to sit down and walk through it as it's laid out, right? I think if you can make use of it, if it will fit into your lifestyle, into your schedule, it's an excellent program, right? In my, in my opinion, right? So I just wanted to say that, you know, and that's, that's my, that's my perspective. Anyway, um, Thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you in another video. Bye.